Hello, I'm just jumping back into your ears on a Sunday to share with you the first episode of our brand new season of our podcast, Titus for Titus. Today is January 26th or Australia Day. And if you've ever wondered why Australia Day causes so much controversy, or if you feel passionately, like I do, that we should change the date, or even if you haven't really cared either way up until now, then this is a must listen. Titus for Titus is the podcast that is hosted by Camilla Roy woman Marley Silver, where she interviews different Indigenous women every week. And in this episode, she's joined by her sister Keely to talk about what Australia Day means to young Indigenous Australians. Take a listen. Yama, Marley Nagaya. From Mamma Mia, I'm Camilla Roy and Dungari woman Marley Silver, and you're listening to Titters for Titters the podcast where we share stories from excellent Indigenous women. Tida means sister, and in this podcast, you'll get to hear the stories of a handful of our deadliest Indigenous sisters who are out there changing the world one day at a time. Australia Day, Survival Day, Invasion Day. Whatever you call it, January 26th evokes more intense emotions than most other public holidays. For us, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people... It can be a day that brings anxiety, fear and a deep sadness. For us, it is a day of mourning, a day that indicates the beginning of the trauma and oppression our people have faced in the last two centuries and still feel the repercussions of today. Feelings towards the 26th of January exist on a spectrum. On one end, there's Aussies who want to keep the day as it is, who don't understand where our feelings of hurt and sadness come from. Hello everyone, and happy Australia Day! (laughs) On the other end, there's people who want to abolish a national holiday altogether. They see Australia as a falsehood, as not a real country because sovereignty was never ceded. In this conversation, I sit down with my younger sister. Keely is 22 years old and the co-founder of Titters for Titters. Quite often I get asked about where she is and where her voice is, so I thought it was perfect to start with this second season by talking to her. Over the last few years, January 26 has been the biggest point of conflict between us. It's because we react to it really differently. For me, as always, I'm loud and proud, marching with all my brothers and sisters in Sydney to Yarbin, which is the Survival Day Festival I've been going to since I was a child. Keely, though, most of the time she's worked on the day or stayed at home and just acted like it was any other day. The hurt for her is really intense, but I wanted to sit down with her and have this conversation to have it out because even we have diverse opinions on the day. This discussion is for all Australians, for all people on all sides of this debate, for you to really think about it, understand the history, understand the hurt. And maybe then we can start thinking about a different day, a better day, a day that really unites us all, where we can truly celebrate the country that we will become. So this is a very nice situation to be in. I am really excited to finally be sitting across from the guest who I've been doing research on for 20 years. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself, mate. (laughs) So what's it? I'll ask the same question I always ask in these. Yeah. What's your name? Who's your mob and where you're from? My name's Keely Silva um, and my mob is Kimula Roy and Dungari um, and I'm from the Sutherland Shire. From the Shire, mate. Yeah. So... I'm so excited to, I guess, be able to share with people uh, the other half of our titters for titters. And quite often, particularly with this podcast, I've been asked a lot, you know, where's Keely? Because you're in the, the bio on the on the gram and you feature <laughs> that's in... That's the important part. Yeah, that's the important part. It's official <laughs> that way. Um, and it'd be great for us to talk about, you know, what your role actually is with titters with titters like <laughs> yes I am the podcast host and <laughs> occasionally do speaking gigs and all that sort of stuff but let's talk about the stuff that you do um I guess I I'm probably more of a behind the scenes kind of part of titters Marley tells me what I'm doing for the week and what I need <laughs> to do to keep up uh, I'm a bit busy as a student I'm doing physio so it's quite a hard course uh, so I've been a bit of a nerd this year but during the year, I did a lot with NADOC. I do a lot of um, traditional painting, a lot of dot painting, and I actually visited a lot of um, preschools, which was really cute. But I guess 
coming into my last year of uni, I'll actually get a chance to be a bit more involved in person, more so than behind the scenes, which is exciting. I think you'll be happy about that. I'm very happy to hear that, <laughs> especially because you really are the king of the kids, uh, always have been. And I just remember your face every day that you came back from working with kids during NADOC you were just beaming because of how beautiful those experiences were. And I, there's one experience I remember you telling that. It would be great if you could yeah. share um, with the little kids who um, blew you away a bit. Yeah, there was – I think it was the first preschool I went to actually. The kids, of course, are all cute. They range from about three to five, just five um, before big school. But they were all very excited. They sat down and they actually told me what each colour of the flag means, of our flag, which was really cool and I'm kind of – you know, it took me back because we didn't really learn that when we were in, like, I don't remember learning anything like and that. And there weren't any Aboriginal kids in the room, No, mate. no Aboriginal kids. Um, and they're all very excited and, you know, red, yellow, black straight away. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, to l- start learning that at such a young age, um, I think it was refreshing and it made NADOC week even more special. And even just the teachers, um, there's a lot of young preschool teachers and stuff coming through. And so they're all, you know, innovative and young and they want to do these things. So, yeah, it was really good. They all reached out to me. I didn't actually go out of my way to ask anyone to get involved. So it's pretty cool. And so we're going to touch on, you know, where we've gotten to as an Australian society and what the next steps are, particularly around what is arguably the hardest day of the year for us and a lot of our community. But I think it would be great to start at the beginning and talk about our childhood and talk about, you know, what it's like to grow up in a place like the Sutherland Shire that is famous for race riots yeah. um, and a subpar footy team. Let's not talk about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when you first sort of realised that, you know, us being blackfellas was different to, you know, 97% of the people we were um, around? Yeah, I guess we've had this discussion before, but when we were real young, that never occurred to me and it never became a thing and I never thought about it. And then I think it was actually, I remember very vividly, this is quite sad, isn't it, that I remember it so clear, but it was in the school holidays transitioning from year six into high school. And I think that's when, you know, people start listening to what their parents say. They start, you know, I guess making somewhat of their own opinions on things. And I remember it was the day after, so it was the 27th and um, I was riding my bike with some friends and I had a... um, tattoo of the Aboriginal flag on my cheek. And Good old temporary tats. Yeah, it's temporary tats. Oh, yeah, no, it's not permanent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of my friends looked at me kind of funny when we all kind of met up with each other and was just like, why do you have that on your face? And I was like so oblivious to it all and was just like uh, for Australia Day, you know, back then it was just Australia Day. That's what we said, I guess, um, when we were younger. But, yeah, I said, oh, yes, it was Australia Day, like, so blasé she's like yeah but why do you have that flag like that's not Australian and I was like wait what I mean I was so confused and I was like no no I swear I'm Australian like like I don't I was just very confused but I think that was the first time and because you know because I didn't understand everything back then it didn't make me upset I was confused and I was a little bit angry because I was like wait what do you mean like I am Australian that's Australian I don't understand and I remember going home and saying it to mum and dad and they were very angry but yeah, that's isn't that sad? That's my first memory, my vivid memory of when, you know, things were different. We were different. Yeah. And that would definitely have changed by now because our I think our flag is around so much. <laughs> yeah, more. yeah, God, yeah. But it does come from that and, and to think it was kind of with a turned up nose to it. And, you know, I'm sure you would have explained that it's the Aboriginal flag. Yeah. And then it just kind of goes, Oh. Yeah. You're you're other. You're not just – you don't just have a good tan. Yeah. Like, you're black. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that it is connected to that day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Very yeah. weird that it came up around that day. I don't know about you, but I can't even really remember January 26, Australia Day, Survival Day, having so much weight to it as it does now as we were growing up. Like, Not at all. I don't remember it even really being a big deal – amongst my group of friends like they did their little things but it was never massive until yeah probably the last four or five years even maybe a bit longer than that if that Mm. but yeah and I think I mean if you look at some of the sort of rhetoric online and when people because people write about this every single year I write about it every single year oh yeah Uh, I know that (laughs) um 
you see a lot of people talk about is, again, quite ironically, there being this shift, a big paradigm shift around nationalism yeah. that actually came with the Cronulla riots. There's a, a great documentary um, by Warwick Thornton called You Don't Need a Map and they talk a lot about um, the Southern Cross constellation and how you know it has a lot of ties in Aboriginal culture but how it's been taken and used yeah. in your Southern Cross tattoo yeah. Yeah. Um, to reflect kind of white nationalism in Australia. Yeah. And it's funny that in that documentary they do an interview with a tattoo artist um, close to Cronulla wow. and he says the day after the, the riots – I had my books filled oh, for weeks God. just with Southern Cross tattoos. That is actually embarrassing. It is, isn't it? But I think that considering the area that we grew up in and the fact that at that time this was a big cultural moment where essentially some people who didn't have very nice opinions on, in this case, ethnic Australians, felt that they had a place to kind of go, we're Aussie and yeah, you don't belong here, that, this is our beach yeah. and, you know, drape themselves in the Australian flag, yeah, that's have right. the Southern Cross yeah. tattoos and that's when the day changed. Yeah. For, for me, it feels like. Yeah. I feel like if we look back in time, that's when it changed and I find that now it's this very aggressive, angry vibes that come with the big piss-ups on January 26th. Yeah. And I do not identify with the Australian flag at all. I actually find it quite intimidating. If I saw someone flying the flag out of their car, I const- like instantly become like on edge. I don't know. How do you react when you see the flag? Uh, I guess it depends on the context. If I'm walking down Cronulla, you know, on that day, I'm feeling pretty intimidated and pretty, you know, a bit nervous. But, you know, how sad because... That one day, um, I only just recently watched a video with real footage from the Cronulla riots. I think I kind of like blinded myself from that for a long time. And I honestly just cried. Like that is what really happened. And I think it's sad that those people who did participate in that used the flag to create this really, really negative culture and then continue that and take it to every Australia Day, every January 26th um, because now it has those negative connotations with it. And I feel like other minorities would feel exactly the same, that when they see the flag everywhere, they're probably like, oh, geez, like, what do these people actually think? That's my first thought. Like, okay, they you know, want to be this really patriarch um, and enthusiastic about the flag, but what does that mean? What do they think about me? Do they think I'm a part of the country? Like, that's probably my initial thought. What are they thinking about me mm. and other minorities who are around? If I'm not white and blonde, like, am I allowed to be here? Or mm. I don't know. Yeah. And there's something so, like, Aryan about talking white blonde people and it's really really toxic and I think we underestimate how terrifying it is when you aren't when you don't fit into that yeah and I think I know I've spoken to like some other people as well other you know ethnic friends not just indigenous people who just feel uncomfortable coming into the Sutherland Shire a lot of people from mm. uni have actually said it to me and even just being that yeah don't fit in kind of yeah feeling and it's horrible yeah so Let's talk about, I guess, what we do on that day now. For for me, I always go into Yarbin, <laughs> yeah. um, which, you know, is, is something I really love doing. It is essentially the Aboriginal response to the day that happens in Sydney at Victoria Park. It's about celebration. And as there's so much um, sadness that comes with the day, it is really a day of mourning. Yeah. It is really nice to be able to do the – there's a march that happens, so yeah, we yeah. march to Victoria Park and, you know, talk about a lot of the problems we still see that are all directly linked to invasion. And then we get to the park and we're able to go, this was really, really awful, but damn, we're good. Yeah. Look at how we've survived. Look at how we're thriving and look at to the future because of what we can do next. But I know it's been a lot harder for you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot harder. And admittedly, I'm not afraid to say that we have really clashed on this. Yeah, massively. <laughs> it's probably the biggest, most polarising thing in our relationship. And it's really hard. And I think it's because we are very different people. Where <laughs> I'm the kind of person who I'm like, if you don't like me, I don't care. Like, I really don't care at all. And you are kinder. <laughs> you are just kinder than I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's been, yeah, it is a hard day. Um, the last couple of years I've actually just agreed to work the whole day just to avoid anything and 
and the, I'm not exactly the most confrontational person. And also I, double pay, public yeah, holiday. Yeah, double pay money, why not? Yeah. But, um, yeah, also just try and avoid the whole thing. And I also feel like I've been trying to avoid the conversation coming up because I guess before, you know, the last couple of years when I wasn't working and I was trying to hang out with friends, um, you know, usually it would come up and people were like, what do you think of today? And, like, and I'm like, I just don't really want to talk about it, even though, you know, now I, I should talk about it because um, I guess those people who were asking the question were actually interested in what I had to say. And I guess that's how, yeah, it's going to change is when, you know, we start educating people about what it's about because I think when I did try and, you know, voice my opinion to some of my friends, they were kind of like, yeah, but we love you and it's not about that. And um, I think it's just there were some people who were – completely oblivious to what it is about but they took it as no no this is about being Australian and you know they took the drinking culture whatever and partying which I didn't see as a negative thing I didn't see it as a good thing but I they weren't being hateful they're just uneducated that was the issue they just didn't know they um yeah I didn't find any of my friends to be you know against me but I also didn't find myself exactly talking about it and Mm. explaining you know, no, this is what it's about. Um, you know, we shouldn't really be drinking and celebrating all this. Yeah. And I think that a big learning point for me in trying to understand your perspective, because my automatic response is like, stuff the white people, <laughs> which is not, that's not helpful and it's not no. productive. Yeah. And it's the remnants of my angsty teen self who really struggled with having anything to do with non-Indigenous people. I've grown so much and I've realised that people – are not malicious and yeah. I've also grown to understand your perspective in the sense that you actually don't have to be the spokesperson for all Aboriginal people. We shouldn't be expected to be that. Yeah. And I think that's a big message I want to give put across like today in this episode and, you know, when you are leading up to January 26th, coming to the day and beyond it, any discussion around it, if you are wanting to have those conversations with Aboriginal people, which 100% is the right area to start these conversations, make sure that that person feels comfortable with it. Do not expect them to be an expert on it. Do not expect them to have a well thought out presentation ready for you <laughs> like I, think, yeah, I do. I think that was, yeah, my issue because I, I didn't really know how to answer a lot of the questions. I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, whatever kind of thing. Um yeah, so yeah. good point. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of when I was at school and, you know, when we did the one period on Aboriginal history in year eight, my teacher being like, we're talking about Charlie Perkins and the Freedom Rides, the most significant civil rights <laughs> action in our history. And it just so happened to pass through Moree and they had the big um, yeah. desegregation of the Moree pools, which is where our nan is from. That was all I knew about it, is that they went through Maury and he pointed to me and he was like, Molly, as an Aboriginal student, would you like to share your perspective on Charlie Perkins? And I was like, like, I just shrugged. Yeah, and happened felt, to me in PE too. And I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> like, and I think it's the same thing. We shouldn't be expected to do this. We're all in different parts of our journeys. Yeah. So if you are going to start this conversation in the workplace, in your social circle, at a bar, Make sure that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person that you're starting the conversation with, one, feels okay because sometimes we can be not in a good place in terms of mental health because for most of us, and I think both of us have the same thing, there's this amazing, great anxiety that comes and sits on your shoulders for about the three weeks leading up to it. And it is that constantly on edge as soon as someone mentions the day your muscles kind of tense and you kind of go oh my gosh am I going to have to explain this am I going to have to do this whole thing again am I going to have to have an argument because a lot of the time people start the conversation because they want to show you why you're wrong so it, it is a really tough day and I think maybe we should talk about like why you know we're talking about you know what it actually means to us and for us because it is um, I was actually doing some research about the day itself because to be honest hasn't it been changed like three times prior so the first time it's officially our national day of celebration is to be celebrated on January 26 was in 1994 yeah see that is so recent (laughs) yeah but before that all the states and territories actually celebrated on different days. Oh, okay. So the first national celebration 
was actually held in 1915 and the national day was the 30th of July. And the reason that they did this was to actually raise money for World War I efforts. Oh, okay. And then they repeated the same thing the following year but did it on the 28th of July. It must have been a Sunday or something, yeah, so okay. they did it the same day. And then after that, New South Wales was the first to do it on January 26, which makes sense because that's when they arrived in New South Wales. Okay. And they actually called it Landing Day or Foundation Day. So think okay. about that. The history is undeniably stooped in the point of invasion. And what the point of invasion to us means, 200 and something years of oppression, of famine, of rape, of murder, yeah. of the stolen generation, of the trauma that we continue to carry with us in our blood. Yeah. So that's what it means. And I, I know a lot of Australians will go, well, it's not about that. We're so far beyond that point. But the day cannot be separated from that moment. And it is so painful for us because while we are mourning and while we reflect on all the ways that this has resulted in pain and suffering and just general awfulness, we look across the road and our non-Indigenous counterparts are on the piss having the greatest time of their life talking about how effing bloody good, mate, it is to be an Aussie. Yeah. And that really does make us feel like we don't fit in. Yeah, I guess I um, I mean, I'm probably answering a question you're going to ask later, but I mean, why not have a day when everyone can just come together? I guess um, if I'm in my group of friends and we're like, yeah, we're going to hang out on Saturday and, you know, so-and-so says, you know, actually that's the day that my grandmother passed away and I'm going to, you know, it's, it makes me really sad. I don't really want to do that. All right, sweet. Let's go next week. Like I, that's how simple it is in my brain that I'm just like so much of the population is unhappy Mm. like why not bring us together and pick one day where you know we can have a couple of beverages with you and celebrate what Australia should be and you know what an identity that we should all be proud of for me it's just I think really um logically and I feel like that is just common sense why not just make everyone happy I don't think I've ever heard it explained that simply honestly like that's it (laughs) we should put it on a t-shirt Okay. <laughs> but that's so right. It's it's as simple as that in some aspects. Yeah, I think obviously very simple. <laughs> that That's the simplified version. I think that's the f- version that we can start on. And that's what I hope a lot of the conversation around this day this year is, is going to be. And I think that the second layer and the deeper layer to that is when we – are moving to the point where it's going to change. And I have no doubt it's going to happen. And, you know, that might sound overly optimistic, but if we look at the way the conversations have changed and how many non-Indigenous people come to our marches on Survival Day and this sort of stuff, we're at a point where we can get there. But in order for it to be effective and in order for us to make that change of the date and it be positive and it not take that bogan sort of like if you're not white, you're not Aussie sort of thing that underpins it. We need to be able to articulate what it actually means to be an Australian. Yeah. Because I don't think we can say that. Because I can talk exactly what it means to be an Aboriginal person, but I have no idea what it means to be Australian. What what, what do you think about... I don't know if that's ever actually been... I don't think it's ever been answered. ...concluded, (laughs) ever. Um, I think we have this idea... I'm thinking of like what other countries think and it's just like these Bogans who just get drunk all the time and shrimp on the barbie and whatnot, or these weird stereotypes that actually never happen, mm-hmm. um, apart, minus the drinking part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know if there's – I mean, it's a, such a hard question. I think um, there's, you know, an Australian identity that everyone would like to think we are, but I just don't know if we see that. What is much. it, the one that we like to think we are? Um this nice happy country that it gets along so well and there's no problems ever. (laughs) Recently I was actually at an event talking to some European human rights people who had come. That's a terrible explanation of what it was. It was actually really amazing. But (laughs) the point being they were talking to me and they'd been talking to a lot of different people across Australia and I said, you know, what surprised you about Australia and expected them to say like there's not enough kangaroos around or something. But instead they said... Um, I thought Australia was like this really accepting, amazing, progressive country. And I was like, hmm, really? Um, but that's what people think of and, us. And, it, and wouldn't it be lovely if we were? Yeah. And <laughs> what they said was what surprised me the most is how racist the country is. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, a little that's, bit. It's really difficult to yeah. be anything other than kind of like 
convict's descendant yeah. sort of thing. And, you know, I still think – I'm pretty biased, but I still think Australia's the best country in the world. Mm. You know, we live on a beautiful land, but um, – I think undeniably in terms of natural beauty, hands down. Yeah, we're the best. Hands down. We just need to start to come together. Mm. And when we talk about the national identity, I've thought about this quite a bit. And oh, really? <laughs> Keep you up at night, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the only thing that I can pinpoint as a somewhat tangible foundation for the Australian identity comes to the Anzac spirit. Yeah. And it's really interesting because there's always the comparison – between Australia Day and Anzac Day, we make that comparison as a community because we go, what do we do in the morning of Anzac Day? We mourn. Yeah. We take a moment to think about the people who have been lost. And then we celebrate what they've and, done. And then we celebrate the country that they've protected. Yeah. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for the date change, that's the solution for people who aren't quite ready to... Change the date. And give up the public holiday. Yeah. Come with us in the morning, yeah. march with us in the morning, mourn the people who are, have been lost. Show some respect. I Show guess. some respect. And then in the afternoon, go celebrate. We can go and I- enjoy the beautiful natural beauty that we have yeah. at the beach. And at come the park. together. Yeah. And yeah. be together. Yeah. And again, that would be lovely. That, yeah. See, that's the, per- <laughs> that's the perfect next step, I think. Yeah. But the reason that I talk about the Anzac spirit is that was the first time in history that people were identifying as Australians, right, in yeah. World War One, And it came down to, you know, the Anzacs being screwed over with Gallipoli by the British and they had this kind of beautiful narrative that we hear now of, of coming together and um, surviving their most terrifying and biggest atrocity at that time. Yeah. And the reason that that's really problematic now is it means – because this is often the thing that we get, I get thrown at me when I talk about why I think the national anthem needs to change, why I think the flag has to change, why I think Australia Day has to change. People always go, that's disrespectful to our Anzacs, which is particularly around the national anthem blows my mind because people go, this is the, the anthem that the Anzacs marched to, which is incorrect, right? At the time they were singing God Save the, I think it was the King. At the time? Queen? Queen? I don't know. But that's not the point. They were singing the British National Anthem. Uh, Uh, Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And then they talk about it's disrespectful to the Anzacs and the country that they fought for that you don't celebrate on January 26th. Again, false, because like I just said before, during World War I, we were celebrating it in July to raise money for the war. Yeah, right. So this is the thing. These are the things that people People don't don't know. know. Yeah. So that becomes the this is who we are is where the mateship and the strength and whatever, but it also means we're connected to war and brutality and death. Like that's what we're basing it on, right? This really toxic, awful imagery. That again, when you think about what an Anzac is, even though there were plenty of black diggers, they're white men yeah, of a particular class, right? So it's just not inclusive. And we need to be able to rewrite who we are, inclusive of all the amazing diverse communities that are a part of Australia. Yeah. And, you know, we are such a multicultural society, whether we accept every culture. So, Mm. you know, that should be something celebrated and everyone should be able to say, yeah, we're Australian. This is who we are. Because I don't think, yeah, you can't pinpoint what an Aussie looks like. No. And how boring would it be if we were all the same? Oh, So boring. So boring. So boring. (laughs) (laughs) So here's the big question I always get as well. If it is to change... What day? Um, well, I heard this before and I was like, yes, this is perfect. And it was May 8th because yeah. it's mate. Yeah. Which, <laughs> you know, that just fits, I feel. And you um, love a pun. Yeah, love, love a pun. Um, I mean, any date but, like, mm. is that an answer? Mm. <laughs> Move it to the next weekend. Do the first Sunday of every January. We'll do something that's... And I think that the whole point is that we can rewrite whatever the date it is, what it means. It can be... The 15th of September, which is my birthday. Um, but it could be that. Let's and not do that's, that. <laughs> but it's got nothing to do with who we are as it stands or our history or whatever. Yeah. But if we made it that day, that means we're that's part of the rewriting, right, of who we are as Australians. We're like, we picked this day because we pulled it out of a, a hat of dates, And now right? everyone's happy. And, and now it's about this and yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it should just be that easy, shouldn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't see why um, changing the date is going to affect anyone else. Yeah, they still get the day off. I think that's what people care about the most is the day off. 
Yeah, weird. Like, it's well, we ha- love a public holiday, no, but it's going to happen anyway. We're going to yeah. get a public holiday, yeah. otherwise I'll be writing a letter to go. <laughs> but like, but my point is that no matter you know if it gets changed, it's not going to change. You know, it's not going to affect anyone else if it's going to make our people happy. Mm. Right. And, and, and not even just our people, right? It's and the people make, who support us too, everyone. Yep, and and a lot of different communities who all the minorities, all of us. Yeah, the ethnic community. I'm sure they. They get behind us a lot, actually, yeah. just as we do with them. Yeah, and that's Any because we, under- it's cause we understand each other's struggle. Yeah. So I'm going to wrap us up, but to kind of step away from January 26, which is obviously the beginning beginning of the year, we're at the beginning of 2020. and 2020. I wonder... Massive. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to hear, as my co-founder of Titters for Titters uh, and my sister, what you would you know, at this point in 2021, oh like to have seen um, us do. And whether that's, you know, practical things on the ground or it is getting that step closer to changing the day, whatever it is that you want to see. This is such a big question. It is. There's so many things. Um, gosh, I think I'd just like us to keep going in the direction we're going. Um, maybe more podcasts. Just see our page grow. Um, it would actually be nice to meet some of the people that we've done stories on. I think that would be really cool. I think it'd be cool if we grew big enough that we could travel to some communities in the outback. Um, I've never really had a chance to do that and it's something I really, really want to do. And I think with this, you know, give us opportunity to make a change, you know, a bit away from social media. We want to go IRL, right? What does IRL mean? In real life, killing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in real life. <laughs> Why did you just say I don't know? Because like, is that like a we're thing? like cool with the kids in style? Mm. I am. You're not. But I <laughs> You didn't so even know what I That's so not a thing. People it's, don't say that. Okay. Anyways. You also want to be TikTok famous. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be TikTok famous. <laughs> That's it. 2020 Yeah, goal. 2020 goal is uh, TikTok fame <laughs> with sponsorship and um, a YouTube <laughs> vlog. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Well, thank you so much, Keely, for finally getting on the airwaves and giving people a bit of an insight into yes, who the me. other <laughs> sometimes hidden half of Titters for Titters is. I'm the cooler is. one. Yeah, we'll let you think that for now. Um, <laughs> thank you. and Thanks for having me. I hope that everyone has a really safe and comfortable, not scary or upsetting January 26th this year. Thank you for listening to Titters for Titters. If you like this show, please share it with someone you know and leave us a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts. If you want to see more from Titters for Titters, follow us on Instagram by searching Titters for Titters. Titters for Titters is produced by Hannah Bowman and Leah Porges. I'm Mali Silver. See you next time.